Let's turn our Bibles to Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 27 and 28. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 27, 28. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 27 and 28. The title of the message is, Are You Ready to Die Today? Are you ready to die today? Are you ready to die today? Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. The Bible says, And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall be shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Father God, we thank you for the law for Father's salvation. Thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ, which is able to wash all our sins away, past, present, future. Thank you for the sitting of the Holy Ghost until the day of redemption. We ask you, Lord God, that you feel your preacher with the Holy Spirit, Given the liberty and the freedom and the power directly from you to preach your message to us. We ask you that you fill us with the Holy Spirit as well. Help us not to ponder or think about the things that are happening in our lives, whether it be good or bad, but help us to just fully focus on your word. We ask you that you would help each and every one of us to be serious in these last days for the day of your return is ever approaching. Amen. We ask you, Lord God, that anyone who's not saved, who is not sure where they're going after they die, pray that today will be the day of salvation. Amen. We ask you, Lord, that you will make them feel uncomfortable until they do get saved. Yes. Be with the brothers and sisters who are not doing well. Be with them and lift them up, Lord God, so that, and heal them so that they come next time. Protect us from devil's attacks. In just name pray, amen. Be ready to die today. Death is a subject that people don't like to talk about. This society has made people just go after enjoying their life. We have terms like YOLO, you only live once. Right. Satan's plan and Satan's strategy is to make sure that people don't think about death. When you don't think about death, you think about everything else. And as Christians, if you're not thinking about death on a daily basis every moment of your life, you're not going to be a good Christian. If you don't think about death, you're not going to think about lost souls. If you don't think about death, you're not going to think about your own Christian walk and fellowship with Lord Jesus Christ. We have too many people out there who do not care about death as a Christian. You could always kind of, you know, do a road map, draw a map, and then see where your Christian state is and the days that when you are backslidden, days that when you weren't close to the Lord, you could just go back to the time when you stop thinking about death. When you don't think about death, you don't think about hell, right? Why is hell not preached throughout the whole country, and throughout the world? Because people don't think about death. When you don't think about death, you don't care about other people's souls. Right. I mean, you can't say, you know, I go out there and street preach. Yeah, you do street preaching. I go out there and witness. Yeah, you witness, but you have no heart in it. It has become so, how should I say, robotic to too many Christians. You're out there doing it because on a Saturday from like 2 to 3.30, it's just my duty to go out there. But are you doing it because you're constantly thinking about death of people? you got to think about it. There are billions of souls out there. Yes. How many? Seven billion and counting in yes. this world? And majority of them are going to burn in hell. Yeah. Why? And when? After they die. Amen. There's no such thing as purgatory where they're going to, you know, spend some time yeah, there, right. you know, go through a refinement. No. no. When you die and if you're not saved, you're going to be waking up in hell. That's it. And you're just going to burn there forever and ever and Amen. ever. Amen. 
there's a person named Brian Johnson. You might have heard of him. He's a tech millionaire. And he wants to live forever. So he invests about $2 million to his body. He even had like a, some blood work done with his dad, who's 70, and his son, who's 17. Some kind of a plasma work, right? And he's doing a lot of weird stuff. But Bible says it is appointed unto him once to die, after, but after this judgment. When his time comes, he's going to die. Amen. I mean, it doesn't matter. He might have the, you know, so-called biological age of like 17-year-old, 18-year-old. But when God says it's time, it's time. Done. I've seen a lot of people that I've known, you know, who were very healthy, but they just dropped dead. Absolutely. Right? You know, this guy runs marathons all the time, but suddenly has heart attack and dies. Right? You could be living the best careful life in the world. But when you're driving on the freeway and some drunk driver hits you, you're dead. Yes. Right? They'll survive. Yes, I always. mean, they never die. But, you know, all the cars that they hit, a lot of times they die. Yes. So you have to think about it. Man, as a Christian, first of all, are you ready to die today? And second of all, are you thinking about death constantly? You have to. It's not a depressing topic. No. It's actually a good topic to think about. Amen. Because if I were to die today, I'm going to be in heaven. Woo! Man, that's yeah. the best place to be. Yes. During the past week, you know, one of our dear sister, you know, Sister Choi, passed away. Right? I mean, yeah. she's been with our church since the early 2000s, even maybe even before, even late 1990s, you know. And then, you know, it was time for her to go. And she's at the best place a person could ever be. No more pain, right? No more worries, right? No more thinking about bills. No more thinking about family traumas or family dramas or anything. She's up there, right? Yes. With a perfect body. How many of you guys are struggling right now with poor health? Me. For any reason, right? You know, you have back problems, nerve problems, head problems, right? Finger problems, you know, joint problems. Everyone has problems, right? Yes. You know, hair problems, right? <laughs> you don't have to worry about it when you're up in heaven. And thank God, you know, she left a, you know, a great testimony, right? Yeah. Literally, even though she was up there in age, you know, she doesn't miss a church. Right. She was always sitting in the back when kids were practicing, Yes. right? I mean, that's a good testimony. I know we have, you know, you know, we have our elderly brothers and sisters in here. You know, I mean, our number one prayer is that Lord comes back soon Amen. so that you won't have to face your death. However, you should never be afraid or, you know, be wary of death, right? No. Because that's a ticket to heaven just like that. Nice the game. But for unsaved people, you have an eternal problem. Yes. Because you're going to burn in hell forever. Amen. In the lake of fire, you're just going to burn and burn and burn. Forever. You know, as we were doing street preaching yesterday, it's gotten to a point where people are, how should I say, desensitized to concept of hell. Yes. Like hell's not real to anybody anymore. I mean, society made it like that. Media made it like that. Yes. So when we preach about hell, I mean, obviously the word of God never comes back void. Amen. So it's going to stick to their head. Amen. And if they're going to see our scripture signs, you know, of hell and people thrown into hell. Yes. And the verses there. You know, the Bible says, inflaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So they're going to see it and read it. But, you know, we were talking to some young kids, right? Probably like in high school, maybe in junior high. When one kid was hearing about the hell, he was laughing. You know, media portrays it, right? Hell, you're going to have party there. Wow. You're going to have a drinking there, you know? Devil's going to be your, you know, like a, how should I say, you know, like a DJ, yeah. right? playing some music, you're going to go jump up and down. No, that's not the place that Bible describes hell. Amen. You're just going to burn and burn. Torment. You're going to turn into a worm, and you're going to burn and burn and burn. There's going to be gnashing of teeth, yes. right? It's just going to burn and burn. 
you know, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, like one of the hardest fire is the dark fire. You can't see. Yes. It's so hot, right? And in total darkness, you're just going to burn and burn and burn. And you're going to hear billions of souls, you know, just like you, in different levels of hell, well, just yeah. burning and burning and cursing at everybody. Yes. And hopefully your name's not part of it because you did not witness to him, right? Mm. Man, so-and-so, Johnny, man, I didn't know he was a Christian. He drank with me. He cussed with me. You know, we shared dirty jokes, right? Shame. We went to the bars and all that stuff. You know, we're doing everything together, and he never witnessed to me. Curse him, you know, probably using every, you know, curse word out there as he's burning for the millionth year, burning for the second 10 million, 20 million. So as Christians, if you're not thinking about death, I guarantee you you're not thinking about hell. And you don't even think about heaven. Do you know why? Because you're so enamored with the things of the world. Things of the world has taken control of your life. Not that you and I shouldn't work hard. Of course, you and I, wherever we are, we're supposed to do everything as unto the Lord. Do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. But however, you suddenly switch Lord with your heart's desire and with your objectives now. You want best things in the world, right? Even though Lord said you should be satisfied and happy with, you know, I mean, that provides your needs. That's it. Amen. It satisfies your needs. Then you don't need anything else. Yes. I mean, you could, I mean, Lord gives grace and mercy to give you a little bit more than you deserve and I deserve. But just because you don't have a million dollar mansion or you're going to be, you know, downtrodden and be depressed as a Christian. It's like, Lord, I needed that, I needed that million dollar mansion. Or like, if you don't get your car of your dreams, are you going to be like, man, this life is depressing? No. Just because you didn't get the job that you wanted, you're like, oh, man, Lord, you don't love me and my family. Or just because you didn't get into that college, you're like, oh, my life is over. I mean, where is your head at, Christian? Yes. Who do you want to glorify? Do you want to glorify God? Yes. Or do you want to glorify man? No. Or you want to glorify yourself? No. If you do not think about death, what are you going to think about? Right. You're going to think about movies. You're going to think about worldly music. You're going to think about, I don't know, every single social media platform out there. Yes. You're going to think about everything worldly if you don't think about death on a constant basis. When you watch sporting events, man, woman, children, do you think about death? No. You know, when there's baseball game playing, when basketball game playing, I'm not saying, you know, oh, you're supposed to completely block off of it. But when you are always into those things, you are not going to think about death. True. You know what? I mean, if you are having a conversation, good time, but you're doing it in a worldly sense with your friends and families and cousins and acquaintances, do you think you guys are going to think about death? No. No. When you're watching a movie at a theater that you're not supposed to be, are you thinking about death? <laughs> when you're at a wicked concerts out there, so-called you know, CCM, Christian music, contemporary music, you're jumping up and down just like rock and roll places, and are you going to say, I'm thinking about death? No. No, you're full of emotion. You're full of lust. Yes. You're just following the ways of Balaam. You're following the ways of Jezebel. Amen. You know, at the end, all you're going to do is, you know, idol worship. Yes. And you're just going to commit fornication left and right. Yes. I mean, that's the end of it. Yes. I mean, whenever you, get, you look at those religions, those two always follow idol worshiping and fornication. Amen. And don't think that it doesn't happen in a Bible-believing church. It happens. It happens more often than you think. How does that happen in a Bible-believing church bought with the you know, blood of Jesus Christ? Why? Because you don't think about anything except yourself. You don't think about death. Preach. I mean, there's reason why the Bible says it is appointed unto men once to die. Because why? Everybody has an appointed time. Point number yes. one. You have an appoint appointed time where you're going to die. Right? Lord willing that you and I don't have to face that death because of rapture. But if Lord tarries, you and I have that set time, and we cannot change it. God said it's time. 
It's not like, you know, when we have a you know, dental appointment, like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, I have something come up, but I have to change the time, right? Doctor's appointment, oh, I'm so tired, I don't want to do it today, so can we, you know, reschedule it? Yeah, it happens. But when it comes to your death, it is appointed. Amen. That's what the Bible says. It is appointed unto men once to die. And you're going to die. I mean, are you really ready to die? No? 1 Corinthians 2, 9. If, let's first go to good story, right? You know, they say positive, right? <laughs> I mean, encouraging. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. So, Christian, if you think your life is sorry right now, you know, think again, right? If you think you're going through such a hard time, think again. You know, if you think it's life is unfair, think again. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. The Bible says, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. This is heaven, right? Amen. I mean, you and I, our own puny brains cannot fathom, imagine how great it's going to be in heaven. Amen. And don't you want to go there right now? Yes. Man, I want to just fly up there right now. I want to hear that trumpet just be Woo! there right now. Let's go. You know, you're like, I have to get married. Forget it. You know, <laughs> and I have to get married. Forget it. I mean, what good is it, right? I mean, it's heaven's waiting for you. Yeah. And you don't want to be there. So that's, that's, a, that's why it's a fundamental question. Are you ready to die today? Unsaved person, you're not. Right. I mean, you die right now, you're going to burn forever. That's it. Save people, if you're not right with the Lord, you're, you're not ready. I mean, how can you say, I am, right? Yeah. If you're not even close to the Lord. I mean, if you're not looking for the appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, right now, you're not. But you will be anyways, by grace of God. Yes. You know, you're part of the rapture if you are in the body of Christ. That's why... It is appointed unto man. It doesn't matter if you're president. It doesn't matter if you're a doctor. It doesn't matter if you're a pope. Amen. It doesn't matter if you are the richest person. Yes. It doesn't matter if you're the poorest person, right? You're, it doesn't matter if you're pretty. It doesn't matter if you're handsome. It doesn't matter if you're in between. Amen. You are going to die. Yes. And the date is set already. God said it is appointed unto man once to die. That appointment is set. That's why if you're unsaved, why are you taking any chances? Mm -hmm. right? You might die today. Yeah. You might die tomorrow. And if you don't get saved after you die, you're going to hear, thou fool, according to Luke 12, 20, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. If you don't trust Christ, Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right now and you die, that's the worst thing that could ever happen to a human being. I mean, the worst thing that could ever happen to a human being, dying without Jesus Christ. Amen. The best thing that could ever happen to a human being is dying after trusting Jesus Christ. Yes. Right? That's why on deathbed, people's testimonies are so different. For example, Winston Churchill, you know, known as one of the great leaders, right? He said, I am convinced there is no hope. He said, there's no hope. He's about to die, and he has no hope. Sad. Right? But us, we have that blessed hope. Amen. You know, Amen. we have that yes. hope of glory. You know, we're going to have body like Jesus Christ. Yes. You know, Lord has prepared mansion for us. Woo! Right? You should never be, how should I say, envious, jealous of the great things that you see in this present world. There's, there's much, 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 much greater things waiting for you. Yes. So don't strive to be the, I don't know, richest person. No. Don't strive to be the most famous person. No. Right? Strive to be that person who glorifies God Amen. on a daily basis. Strive to be that person 
who leads other people from eternal death in the lake of fire to eternal glory in heaven. Amen. Man, what have you been doing? Has someone crossed from death, eternal lake of fire, to life eternal because of you? I mean, have you, I mean, have you led someone to the Lord? Have you witnessed to anybody? You know, preaching of the gospel is to everybody. Amen. It's a command. Everybody. It's not just for preachers. Every single person sitting here, every single person listening, it's God's command for you to go out there and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. I mean, have you been doing it? Amen. It's just like 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Just like studying the word of God, you have to preach the gospel. It's a command. So if you haven't been doing it, oh, so God told you to do it, but you don't do it, then what is it? It's disobedience. Yes. And it's a sin. Amen. And you and I commit it every day Amen. when you think about it. It's not that you don't commit murder. It's not that you don't commit, you know, I don't know, adultery, you know, yeah. robbery or something like that is like the only sin that's considered, right? Uh -huh. When you are supposed to do right and you don't do it, it's a sin. Yes. You're supposed to give a gospel tract to someone, and Holy Spirit is pricking your heart to do it. You don't do it, you're committing sin. Amen. Uh, how many times does that happen to you, especially if you interact with a lot of people? Too many. It happens to you all the time. Yes. Unless you're like someone who's living alone in the Appalachian Mountains, you rarely see someone ever. You and I are going to be accountable for people that we meet and we interact. Yes. And don't tell me that I don't know what to say. The Bible tells you everything. Amen. How much more do you need to know? Right? Of course, there are certain people that you meet, they go deeper into doctrines. Right? That's how you study the Word of God. But regular person, you just tell them they're a sinner on their way to hell. Tell them that Jesus Christ died for your sins. You have repenting heart. You know, turn from your ways and turn to God and trust him as your Lord and Savior. Nothing else added. How Amen. hard is that? I mean, people think of this death as a joke, especially young people. Yes. Like I said yesterday, you know, we were talking to some young people. He's like, they live life as if they're going to live forever. Yeah. Right. yeah. So that's why death is not that important to them. Well, you never know, right? right? If God says your time is tomorrow, you could be 15-year-old. Your time is tomorrow, yes. right? I mean, don't think that, don't be naive about it. And one of the things that, you know, brought to my attention again is I asked him, if you were to die right now, you go to, would you go to heaven? He goes, no, I'm, I'm, I think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, is your answer, I think so? That's not 100%. No. Do you think you got to go to heaven if you die right now? I think so. I think so means that there's some doubts in there. Yes. It's not 100%. With any doubts in your heart, you can't get saved. Right. I mean, I'm not saying that you're not saved. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. But there's a likely chance that you aren't. Why? Because when you thought that you got saved, if you go back to that day, just like the young man I talked to yesterday, he said, yeah, you know, I felt good. I had, I had like a good experience. What experience? You just need the word of God. Yeah. Well, I mean, what more do you need to feel? Oh, yeah, you know, I felt good after this retreat. So I'm, I'm saved, right? I mean, that's like a testimony of majority of people. Yes. They always add it. I mean, obviously, they're going to say, oh, yeah, I repeat it after a sinner's prayer, and I trust that Christ, and I, I, I felt, you know, but... I also felt something. Yeah. What do you have to feel? Right? You know, that's what devil wants you to think. Amen. There's going to be millions of people, I believe that, they think they're going to go to heaven yes. by thinking that they repeated a prayer, but they're going to wake up in hell. Amen. Why? Because they were trusting something else plus Jesus Christ. If you don't remember a time when you trusted only Jesus Christ, knowing that you were a sinner on your way to hell, believing that his blood can wash away your sins, having a repenting heart, believing that he's God and receiving your heart as your Lord and Savior, 
If you remember that time, if you don't remember it, you have to check your salvation again. Yes. You have to. Why do you want to even take chance? No. I mean, 1 John 5, 13 says, These things have I written to you that believe on the name of Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Amen. God said you could know. Yes. You know, talk to a Calvinist. Oh, you won't know until you die. <laughs> oh, you're contradicting the word of God. Yeah. Right? Yeah. God said you could know. Amen. God said you and I can know. Why? Because we're not trusting anything else. Except the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, if you don't know where you're going tonight, and if you think that you're going to heaven, man, I'll be afraid yes. to be in your shoes. Because if you're on your deathbed right now, you'll be shivering. You'll be terrified. You'll be like praying, like, oh, God, you know, I hope I go to heaven. That's not a good place to be. No. You know, I mean, think about Sister Choi. I'm sure she was just waiting. You know, I can't wait to see what Lord said is about 1 Corinthians 2 9. I haven't seen it. You know, I haven't heard it. So I want to really see it now. I also want to see my mentions in heaven. I wish she's enjoying it right now. But for other folks on the other side, they are just scared. And you shouldn't be, especially if you're listening to this message. You should never, ever worry about your death if you have trusted Christ Amen. the right way yeah. as your Lord and Savior. And don't think that, you know, I'm being nitpicky about it. I have to. Amen. I met too many people who lied about their salvation. Yes. Because they hear it all the time. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I trusted Christ. I trusted Christ. You know, I'm a believer. Yeah. You hear that all the time. I'm a believer, right? Sure. Okay. Then what are you try, trusting to go to heaven? What are you trying, tr trusting to keep you out of hell? Then their real truth comes out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah, you know, I, I accept Christ, and I'm also living a good life. Mm -hmm. I try not to do bad or anything. What is that? You're relying on your works. Amen. I mean, you're... You're trusting your faith plus works crowd, right? If you ever thought that, okay, you know, I was born into a family who went to church, so I'm saved, you know, you better check your salvation. Yes. If you ever thought that you went to a rock concert, so-called Contemporary Christian Music Festival, and that you accepted Christ, Harvest Crusade of some sort. Right. You know, you're all, you know, emotionally charged then with lust and everything. And you feel like you're safe. Check that. Amen. And you feel like, wow, you know, someone was talking and speaking in tongues, you know, visions, talking about it. And suddenly one day, you know, I love my wife more. I love my husband more. I love my children more. I feel good. I feel better. I feel like a, you know, nicer person. Check. Yes. Because that's not being safe. You know, you, you don't. Understand, like, you can't trust anything other, literally anything other Amen. than Jesus Christ. Yes. I mean, nothing else. Yes. Nothing. That's why when we see, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it talks about gospel of Christ, verses 1 through 4. People believe in vain. What does that mean? They know it in their head, yes. but they never believe it from their heart. A lot of people know it in their head. That's why people can give good answers or right answers. Yeah. But when you really check their heart, their truth shows. And then, oh, the wise person will be like, oh, you know, I never really did it. Amen. Just Amen. trust in Christ. <laughs> now, when I get saved right now, yes. that's a wise person. Instead of letting your pride get in the way. Woo. Do you think your pride is worth burning in hell forever? No, sir. Just be honest with yourself. I mean, it's about you and your eternity. Don't be like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm fine. You know, when I was like four years old, I don't even know how you could remember certain things, you know, that young. <laughs> you know, when I was like two and a half, you know, maybe you did. You know, yeah, that's it. And but some people, it's true. But certain people, your parents have like kind of brainwashed you. 
Yeah, that's very dangerous. Yes. People who grow up in the church, they think that, yeah, you know, my daddy told me I'm saved. How are you saved? My daddy told me I'm saved. <laughs> you know, what did you do? My daddy told me I'm saved. That's it. Yeah. Young man, young woman, with that testimony, you're not saved. What'd you do? Amen. You just repeated after your dad in a prayer. That's it. Did you know you were a sinner on your way to hell? Did you even know you were a sinner? I mean, did you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins? Did you accept him into your heart as your Lord and Savior? I mean, your answer should be because I trust that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Simple as that. Amen. He shouldn't be like, you know, because my daddy told me, my mommy told me, my church told me, you know, my preacher told me, right? No, that's not the right testimony. So if you have any doubts about your salvation, if you don't know where you're going after you die right now, you have to resolve it. 2 Corinthians 6, 2 said, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Amen. Not tomorrow, not tonight, you know, not day after. Bible says now is the accepted time. Amen. And we have to get saved right now. Or else, people who always, you know, procrastinate when it comes to salvation, they don't get saved. Things of the world. You think devil's going to leave you alone? Devil was like, whew, man, I almost lost one of my own. Yeah. Man, I'm going to do whatever I can. Yes. I'm going to bring affairs of this world so that this person will never, never get saved. That's true. That's what you're facing. There's spiritual battle going on Amen. right now. Right? Like, if any of you are unsaved, if anyone who's listening is not unsaved, you know, devil's like... And his cronies are just working overtime. Absolutely. Like, okay, bring, bring wicked thoughts to their mind. Bring other thoughts. Bring worldly thoughts. Don't let them concentrate, right? Man, we're, we're very close, you know. Yeah. You know, the, the, the scale is tipping to them getting saved, Don't right? No, no, no. Yeah, right? It's happening. So yes. if you have that Holy Spirit conviction in you, you know, if your conscience is leading you the right way, and you know you're a sinner on your way to hell, you believe that Jesus died for your sins, then you have to accept him the best way you know how, plus nothing. Forget about experience. Forget about feelings. Just trust the Bible. Amen. And then you get saved. I mean, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 1. It's not what I'm saying. This is what the Bible says. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. Let's start looking at verse 23. And this is the next question. Are you born again? What's a born again Christian? Amen. No one can answer that question, literally. <laughs> Unless you go to a Bible believing church, you know, brought up in a sound doctrine, no one can answer. Like the answers that I heard yesterday is like, oh, yeah, you know, being a good person. You know, you're like, you want to do something for the Lord, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, being born again. You know, firstborn, we are born into this world, flesh-wise. Yes. Second is, we got to born again, you know, spiritually, Amen. right? When you trust Christ as your Lord and Savior, your spirit is born again. Simple as that. But no one can answer because no one is taught the right doctrine. No one is taught the right Bible this day and age. No one doesn't know anything. They just want to go to church and worship, praise and worship. That's all they want. And play and play and play, Right? and meet girls and boys and get hooked up. Mm -hmm. That's not why you go to church, Amen. right? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, the Bible says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. Oh, wow. You know, word of God is very important. Yes. You and I get born again through the word of God. Amen. Not through speaking in tongues, not through the Holy Spirit experience, you know. Not through, you know, giving money to church. Not because you become a, you know, deacon, elder, pastor, minister. Not because you're a pope. Not because you're a priest, father. No. Woo! Through the word of God, you're Great. born again. Yes. Which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass. That's why life is like a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Amen. You're appointed to die. And you could be tomorrow. Yes. You, know, you know how fragile our bodies are? If the Lord says, okay, time for heart attack, I die. Yeah. I mean, within like um, 30 seconds, I get shocked and I just drop dead. Okay, 
It's time, your family, time to go. Freeway accident, it wasn't even your fault. It's time, yes. right? So life is like grass. I mean, think about it. If you see grass, you step on it, it withers. <laughs> you know? it's, that, it's that fragile, yes. right? Verse 24, for all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. Verse 25, but the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. You get saved through the word of God, yes. through the gospel of Jesus Christ. So there is an appointed time for you to die. Point number two, going back to Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die. So dying, you die alone. Simple as that. You don't die together. It's your own death. Yes. Yeah, don't worry about other person. You're going to die. I'm going to die if Lord tarries. So it is fact, according to the word of God, one day you yourself will die. Yes. Accept it. Don't be like Brian Johnson who's going to try to live forever, right? I'm going to die. Amen. So what am I doing about it? I mean, have I done anything for Lord Jesus Christ? I mean, if you're saved people. I mean, have you done anything for him lately? If you haven't been thinking about death, there's no way. What if I were to die today? Then your Christian life will change. Yeah. The reason as Christian you don't do anything for God on a most, day, most days is because you don't think you're going to die. Simple as that. I'll do it tomorrow. Right? You do it all the time. You yes. procrastinate. Lord said, okay, talk to that man, talk to that woman about me. Yeah. Lord, I'm too tired today. You know me, I'm chicken. You know? <laughs> Someone else will do it. And the worst thing happens, that person dies. I'm sure it happens in some of your lives already. As you grow older, Young people might not understand as much, but as you grow older, you're going to face a lot of death in your life. Amen. You know, your own family, your cousins, your acquaintances, right? You're going to see people die, you know, in your life. And the last thing you want to happen is that people you die are one of the persons that you could have witnessed to, but you never did. Yes. Yeah. Because they have to die. Yeah. Okay, word of God. I have to die and you have to die one day. And if you have not, you know, share gospel with them or told them about Jesus Christ and he died, died tomorrow, their blood will be on your hands. Yes. Forget about blood being on your hands. How terrible would you feel at the white throne judgment? You see him just sent down to eternal lake of fire once and for all. Man, that's going to be so sad, right? Person that you knew person that you could have witnessed to. I mean, if they rejected the gospel, you've done your best, you know, that's a different story. But you never gave him a chance. You know, what do people always say? Just give me a chance. Whether it's job, whether it's different opportunity, people always say, you know, let me prove it to yourself. Amen. Yes. Just give me a chance, right? Yes. But you never gave him a chance. And you were that last line and last hope. And you never gave him that chance. You never gave him hope of glory and the hope of Jesus Christ. And they are going to burn in hell, and you're part of the reason. Ultimately, it's their responsibility, but you could have done something different. Yes. What are you doing? I mean, why are you not thinking about death on a daily basis every time? Come on. If you don't think about death, and if you don't think about one day, the person that I'm talking to will die. There's no urgency. No. There's no love for that soul truly. No. And you're not going to do anything about it. Even inside the church, if you don't think about that, how are you going to be faithful in the ministry, right? You're like, oh, someone else will do it. I'll do it next week. I'll do it next time. I, can't, I didn't give my heart to the Lord today, you know, but I'll do it next week. No, you're, you're a next week Christian, <laughs> next month Christian. Amen. Next year, Christian. Never. But you should be today's Christian. Yes. You should be thinking about your death 
all the time. Amen. So everybody's going to die. And continuously, point number three, we don't have much time. I'll go quickly. Once to die. Yeah, you die once. Right? That's it. There's no reincarnation. Right? Amen. You're dead. Yeah. Don't think that, you know, I haven't lived a good life. I haven't done everything for Christ. <laughs> I mean, he should never come out of a Christian's mouth, but, you know, next time when I come back, I'm going to do best for him. Wow. I'm going to do best for him when I'm in heaven. I mean, what kind of Bible are you reading? What kind of church are you in? You know, I mean, doctrinally speaking, when we look at Hebrews 27 and 28, you know, we're looking at the you know, tribulation. And I'm saying this because some people will be like, oh, you know, you're doctrinally wrong. No. You know, it talks about the rapture as well. And it talks about Enoch, you know, Elijah, and Moses, you know, three phases. So that one, if you want to learn more, you know, do Bible study, Hebrews Bible study, right? But it's preaching time, and 27 is general. It applies to everybody. Then, if person's going to die once, and they're not going to, that's it, no reincarnation or anything, then you have to see them as someone who's going to die one day. It comes back to your love for the lost souls. Amen. It comes back to you knowing that you're going to one day die. Don't live like some Christians out there, I mean myself included, as if I'm going to live another 10, 20 years without any issues. Man, you, don't, you and I don't know when the Lord's going to call us home. No. So you have to live today as if it's your last day, right? Yes. But don't suddenly like, Go out there and witness to 500 people when you haven't done it. It's not going to work like that. Just be faithful at whatever you're doing that you're supposed to do. Right? Be faithful at work as if you're doing it unto the Lord. At home as if you're doing it unto the Lord. Right? Husbands, love your wives. Right? Wives, submit yourself to the husband. Children, obey your parents. Just simple as that. Simple as those things. Amen. Do it as if you're doing it to the Lord. In the ministry, singing for God, do it from your heart. Do it as if you're to the Lord, performing, do it as if you're to the Lord. Because one day you're going to die. Amen. Do you want to be at the judgment seat of Christ and be like, I regret everything that I've done because I didn't do it from the heart? No. Because I just did it because everybody was doing it? I just did it because out of my habit? It's good to have a good habit, but it's bad to have a habit that you don't have heart in it. It's bad to have a habit of just coming to church and just leaving without getting anything out of it. Yeah. Right? You just get your stomach filled, you know, good lunch. You go home, and you, oh, I can't wait for that lunch time. I, mean, I don't want you to be that person that comes to church just to eat, right? It's good. I know it's great food, but you want to be spiritually fed first. Yes. And then physically fed with the fellowship. That's the best part. You know, don't, that's why the devil always wants to switch it up. Yeah. He's the best at switching things, yeah. right? Yes. He's like, you could do things for God. But do think for yourself first. You know? I mean, Apostle Paul said, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Amen. Think about it. I mean, he, he, I mean, he was already dead, right? He went to third heaven and came back. But knowing that, I mean, he's like, you know what? I, I, I want to die. Don't you, don't you think his greatest desire was just to die so he could be with the Lord? But he had his ministry to do, and he was faithful at it. Yeah. I mean, how faithful are you, Christian, human being, less than nothing, who's going to die one day? Yeah. I mean, don't you want to be found faithful? And point number four, but after this, the judgment. There is judgment waiting for everybody, saved and unsaved. Unsaved, white throne judgment. You're going to burn in hell for eternity. Saved people... Judgment seat of Christ is waiting for you. You and I, we have to answer to the Lord. And yes. Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, knowing the terror of the Lord. It's going to be horrible. It's going to be frightening. You see Almighty God. You see Lord Jesus Christ, creator of the universe, judging your life. Everything you've done after you've gotten saved. Yes. And some of you have been saved for a long time. Yes. Everything you've done, every second of your life, God's going to judge. I mean, we're talking about fair God, jealous God, wonderful God, 
king of kings, lord of lords, who's going to send someone to hell for eternity? Even if they were good according to human standard, they never stole, they never cheated, they never done anything, but they were very religious, they trusted faith works everything, God said, you're going to burn in hell forever. Amen. That terrible God is going to judge you and me. Yes. You think we're going to get away with anything? No. Never. That's why you have to get right with the Lord. How do you ever think that I'm going to be ready and ready for judgment instead of Christ when you don't think about death? Right? You yourself, if Lord tarries, are going to die. And then you're going to be judged by the Lord Jesus Christ for what you have done for him. That's why if you have sin problems in your life, you have to resolve it like right now. Amen. I mean, that's why 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Why? Because we have sin problems as saved people. Yes. As long as you and I have this flesh, we're going to commit sin. Amen. So that's why you have to get right with the Lord on a daily basis. Yes. And if you haven't been thinking about lost souls, if you haven't been thinking about witnessing, if you didn't have like that, fire and zeal, like that first love when you got saved, when you're looking at the lost souls out there and you had like no feelings at all or like no zeal to witness to them, it's because you weren't thinking about their death and your own death. You know, if I were to go back in time, even to last week, and as I was preparing this message, I was like, if I thought about that person's going to die one day, man, I, I would have done something different. Yeah. I met some people that I didn't do anything about. I feel like, oh, I'm going to see them again. No, I might not see them again. Yes. Then what am I going to do? Well, what kind of answer am I going to give to the Lord? Right? If I thought about their death more seriously, if I thought about death as a, I mean, itself seriously, then I would have done something different. My life will be changed. Your life will be changed if you think about death at every moment. Amen. And it's a good thing. Because yeah. it's going to keep you in the right path. It's going to make you sober. It's going to make you vigilant. Yes. And it's going to make you think about things that you do before you do it. You're going to rely on the Lord more. Hey, right? Man. You're going to find strength in the Lord. And everything that you do before you do it, you're going to let the Lord be the decision maker, being filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Because, man, if I die at any moment, I don't want to die committing sin. Even though I know I'm going to wake up in heaven, contrary to some bad doctrines and, you know, false doctrine out there. If you commit suicide, you're going to go to hell. You don't. Once saved, always saved. Amen. But you're going to have to give yourself account yeah. to the Lord. So think about it. If you think about that, I guarantee you, your life will change. Things of the world will just like, you know, turn your eyes upon Jesus like that Him, yes. They become very dim. You know, things of the world. You do your best, you know, make a living, support your family and whatnot, right? But things of the world become very dim, right? Things of God becomes brighter and brighter. Thank you, Lord. Things of God is the most important thing for you. You have your responsibility, and you have to be accountable for it. I, as a Christian who's saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, I have a duty to be out there and witness to people who's on their way to hell. Their scheduled time might be tomorrow. That's why you have to pray. Why do you think we, Wednesday night prayer meeting, we always pray for the lost souls? You should do it on an everyday basis. Yes. To current members, family members, and acquaintance, and to the lost people that you know, you have to pray. Amen. If you're thinking about that, don't you think you're going to pray yeah. for their souls? The reason you don't pray for people's souls is because you don't think about death. Yes. Because you think they're going to live forever, or you think someone else is going to do it. If I knew that... My cousins are going to die one day, and it could be tomorrow. Man, I'm going to pray harder. Yeah. I am. Yes. And there's no reason for me to not to pray hard if I care for their soul. Same thing. If you are serious about this death business, you're going to do it. you got to get right with the Lord, Christian. I myself included. I mean, we have to really, really look back and repent of our ways and get right Amen. and think about death. Not just during, you know, preaching time. We got to think about death, you know, every single day and every single moment. Yes. Then as a Christian, you and I will become a better Christian, better soldier for Jesus Christ. Amen. And the souls of this lost world will look more precious to us than ever before. And we will not regret. We will not have many, many more regretting experiences or times because we would have done our best 
at every moment, yes. trying to witness to them because we might not see them ever again until the you know, white throne judgment. Amen. So think about it. What are you doing? You know, are you ready to die to that? Let's pray. Dear Father, as Christians, so many times we just live each day lackadaisically, just full of our own affairs. And we don't think about death like we should. When Sister Choi went to be with you, Lord, I know for sure that she was welcoming because she could be with you now in heaven, Lord. But for us, we know we have a point in time, and it might not even be because you might come back right now, Lord. But we have work to do. Each one of us have accountability and responsibility to preach the word. Do we really see each person as someone who's going to die one day and stand before you and be sent down to eternal lake of fire? Or do we just go each day as if we don't care for them at all? Help us to, number one, check our hearts and get right with you, Lord. Things that we have to confess our sins, Lord, help us to get right. Because without living the life, thinking about death, hell, heaven, we won't be a good Christian, Lord. I pray that you'll bless the rest of the day, Lord. And if anyone who has any questions about where they're going, Lord, I pray that they'll get it resolved today. I pray that they will be honest about it and trust you, Lord. In that regard, anyone who's listening and who doesn't know where they're going, Salvation is very simple. That's like I'll call the simple plan of salvation. Do you know that you're a sinner on your way to hell? The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of glory of God, for the wages of sin is death. You are a sinner on your way to hell. The Bible says, but the fear of an unbelieving, abominable, murdered, whoremonger, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, according to Revelation 21, 8, all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brims, which is second death. You're on your way to hell as a liar, as a sinner. But God commanded his love toward us in that while we are sinners, Christ died for us. But Jesus Christ died for all your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You must realize that you are a sinner on your way to hell. You must turn from your ways and turn to God, knowing that only Christ can save you from hell. With that heart, you can get saved when you trust him as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth's confession is made unto salvation. Knowing this now, wherever you are, if you don't know where you're going 100%, in this prayer receive Jesus Christ, not to your head and life, in your heart as your Lord and Savior, and get saved from hell. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. Right now, the best way I know how, with all my heart, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my only personal Savior and Lord. I only trust precious blood of Jesus Christ to wash all my sins. Thank you, Lord, for dying for all my sins and coming into my heart as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 If you pray with all of your heart, you're saved once and for all. But if you haven't and if you still have any questions, please do talk to me or any of the brethren and make sure that you know where you're going after you die.